Hello my friends, it's Sylvie Curry again in my kitchen. Today I have a big project that I'm going to be working on. I'm going to be pressure canning some tuna. Some frozen tuna that's been in the refrigerator. I've got my canner set up in the background. It's an all-American canner. I've got my lids, my bands, and my jars are in the dishwasher. So they're getting sanitized, the jars, not the bands and the lids. And I'm getting ready to cut up this tuna. There's nothing better than making tuna salad or any other type of tuna, like casserole or side dishes. There's nothing better than having your own canned tuna that you've pressure canned yourself. I've got some big chunks. This is one of the smaller ones. This is yellowfin tuna. And I've got some bigger chunks. This is actually a seven pound of yellowfin tuna. Six months ago, it was sushi grade, but because it's been in the freezer so long, it's no longer sushi grade tuna, but it makes great canned tuna. The advantage of having your own canned tuna is that you know exactly what's in that can. It's not going to be chicken of the sea where it could be varying species or sources of, of fish. This is all yellowfin tuna that I'm doing today. Tomorrow I'm going to be canning again and I have some bluefin tuna that I'm going to be doing at that event. This is about 15 pounds and I've got another, oh, 15 pounds here that I'm thawing out. To can also. I probably won't get to this until tomorrow. There's some bluefin tuna in this bag in addition to the yellowfin tuna. This tuna has been defrosting since yesterday. I had it in the refrigerator and so it's still frozen but actually that makes it easier to cut. So I'm going to cut it into cubes or chunks so that when I put them in the cans canning they'll be a nice size. You can chunk them up any way that you wish. This is just my preferred method. You see at this stage defrosting is very easy to cut. I'm going to finish doing all of this tuna to get ready to do my canning process. I've got a good portion of my tuna chopped up. And this is the last part of the big chunk, the seven pound chunk of yellowfin tuna that I had. I'm going to cut it up and it's still it's a bit frozen, but it will thaw enough for me to put it in the jars. This is my setup for pressure canning my tuna. I've got my pressure cooker. I've got three inches of water in there per manufacturer's suggestion. And I've got a tray in there. This pressure cooker can do, they say about 19 pint sized jars at a time. So we'll see. I'm not sure I'll have 19 on this batch, but it'll be close. Got my lids and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the fire on and get them hot and that's mainly just to get the lids ready it's not really a sanitizing process for them you don't really need to boil them got my second tray so I can put two levels of can canning jars in the pressure cooker and I've got this little gadget which goes on top of the pressure cooker lid and I'm at an altitude where I can use the 10 psi of pressure and we do that after it starts to brew in a little bit. I've got my lids and my funnel, my little magnetic pick up your lid thing, and my other little contraptions and some clean towels. We're going to get ready to do this. We're pressure canning tuna today. I typically sanitize my jars in the dishwasher and so they can get good and clean. So there are my jars, they're getting ready to go through the cycle so that I can get them 
ready to can this tuna. I've set up all of my tuna and jars, ready to fill them so that we can pressure can them. I did one jar and weighed it out and that's approximately 10 ounces of tuna in that jar. So we know that in each individual jar, I'm gonna get eight to 10 ounces of tuna, canned tuna. Okay, let's fill these jars up. I just put my chunks in there and I'm gonna try to not have any air space, but it really doesn't matter. There's a lot of liquid that's gonna come out of this tuna and fill in the spaces. But I like to get that bottom layer fairly, fairly filled. Canning tuna is very, very simple and easy. The hardest part is waiting the 100 minutes for it to go through the cycle of canning. And that's about it. When putting the tuna in here, I have to make sure that I leave at least an inch of head space. And that's it. I'll go through and finish filling these up and then we'll head to the canner. I've got some vinegar and a clean paper towel. And I'm gonna go over the outside of all of these jars to make sure that I get any residual oils or pieces of tuna off the lids, off the jars so that my lids will seal correctly. And just a matter of just going around and wiping. I could have filled these jars with my funnel, but because the tuna was easy to get in a wide mouth jar, I chose not to. I've got my lids that I put in some very hot water, and now I'm gonna put them on top of the jars. Now that I've got all my lids on, I can put the bands on. Let me just give them a, a twist. We don't want it to be a strong twist, just what they call it. I heard someone call it a ladylike twist. got the water in my canner heating up here and I'm going to start adding the jars. The goal is to get maximum number of jars in the canner and supposedly I can get I think it is 19 of these jars in so we'll see what it does. It's going to take a while for this canner to come up to temp Number one, because these jars are, are cold, because this is a raw, can Ooh. raw canning procedure. And three, six, seven, eight. I've got eight currently in there. I'm gonna put my tray in and see how many more I can get in there. I'll finish putting jars in this top tray. Well, it looks like I'm only going to be able to do 16. I think maybe because when the reference to pint jars is probably to the the more jelly-like jar, jars, and not the white mouth ones. Four, five, six, seven, eight on the top and eight on the bottom. And I'm gonna now put on my lid 
and I walk myself through this just to make sure that I do it correctly. Line the arrow with that indentation and try to get it evenly around. And then I do a look-see all around just to see if I've got the lid in correctly. I'll take my opposite end little things and tighten them up. I don't want them super tight yet. I'm not going to put this on my 10 PSI pressure gauge. This has a 5, a 10, and a 15. I'm at an altitude where I can use the 10. And when I start getting a little bit of steam coming up out of here, then I can put this on so that I can build up my pressure. Once I reach 10 PSI of pressure, then I'll do my countdown of 100 minutes for the cooking process to be complete. Our pressure cooker has reached 10 PSI. And we can tell because the gauge says so. In addition, I'm getting a little bit of wobble on my 10 PSI weight. So I'm going to start timing the cook and this is going to be 100 minutes from now. Okay, we're good to go. Come back again in about 100 minutes. I've reached the zero pressure mark, so I can take the lid off carefully. You can hear that bubbling in there. Looking good. Notice all that liquid in there. That tuna gives up a lot of liquid. I won't have to buy any tuna for a long while, or canned tuna for a long while. Each one of these jars will make a nice serving of tuna salad. Tuna nuda casserole. Started popping already. Another little close-up of that. 